Welcome in to another episode of the Fantasy Football Forecast. I am your host, Matt, and today we are talking about the New York Jets breaking down their last season, their offseason, and looking forward from a fantasy football perspective. Um, so last year, kind of a tough season for the Jets. You know, they were kind of the darling team coming into the year. They were on hard knocks. They had gotten Aaron Rodgers. They had a lot of weapons around him. They had a great defense. The stars looking we're looking to align, and unfortunately, that that first game of the year ruptures his Achilles in the first quarter. So at that point, the year was kind of toast. I mean, they they fought admirably, only on the defensive side of the ball, finished seven and eight or seven and ten, missed the playoffs, got rid of Zach Wilson. I think that was kind of time, <laughs> uh, obviously. And in the off season, you know, their their main priority was shoring up the offensive line and making sure Aaron Rodgers is protected and upright. Um, You know, they brought in left tackle Tyron Smith, right tackle Morgan Moses. And in the draft, you know, they spent their first round pick on left tackle Olu Fashano, who is a very great prospect. Um, You know, a lot of people thought they might go in the direction of Brock Bowers, but, you know, I think this was a move where, you know, obviously priority number one was shoring up the line and, you know, even if he's not going to start right away, you know, they expect him to be a solid piece for years to come. So I, I think that was a very good pick. Um, you know, that weakness should hopefully turn into a strength. Um, you know, on top of that, they did bring in Mike Williams from the Chargers. Obviously, he's a great player. He struggled with injuries throughout his career. Um, you know, last year he had a sin- season ending ACL injury, which was a tough blow for the Chargers. But, you know, hopefully he's able to come back healthy and, um, you know, do what what we've seen him do over the years. And, you know, as a Chargers fan, I I wish him nothing but the best. Um, Looking at the other skill position players that they brought in during the draft uh, in the third round. So they didn't have a second round pick, but in the third round, they drafted Malachi Corley. Um, So if you're not familiar with his game, go watch his highlight tape because it's it's pretty fun to watch. He's kind of a lot like a Debo Samuel type player. Um, where they're going to manufacture a lot of touches. He kind of runs with the ball like a running back in his hands, kind of that yak guy. Um, So I I think it'll be interesting to see how they get him acclimated into the offense because, you know, he's a guy that Rodgers was very high on, which, you know, we've talked about with Rodgers before, is a very important thing. You know, he doesn't often trust his young receivers early. You kind of got to build that up. But this was a guy that he was high on. You know, he invited him to stay uh, at his guest house this year, kind of help build that rapport. So that'll be a kind of an interesting, you know, storyline to watch. And then in the fourth round, they drafted Braylon Allen, running back out of Wisconsin. Um, so this guy has some of the best freshman year, like highlight tape in the sense of the word. He was just kind of a bulldozer. Didn't Wasn't quite as productive his last two seasons, but still only like 20 years old. And we saw him dominate Big Ten competitions as a 17-year-old, kind of that bruising back. Um, and I guess we'll kind of discuss this, you know, on the Brees Hall side of it. But, you know, for Brees Hall managers, fantasy managers, that that could be a little bit concerning anytime you add these, you know, big bodied backs, um, you know, taking away goal line work. But, you know, we'll see how that that works out. But I think that was, you know, maybe a reach depending on other things that they may have needed. But again, we talked about this with the Patriots when you have a good defense already, you can really invest in offensive weapons and and that's what they did. And um, yeah. So looking at them from a fantasy perspective last year, we don't even need to talk about the quarterback position. That was horrible. Garrett Wilson finished at wide receiver 31, obviously just a lack of touchdowns and atrocious quarterback play. Um, Brees Hall ended up RB number four, you know, he was coming off the major injury from the year before. So it was good to see him, you know, kind of get back on track, get healthy as the year went on. Um, and so expect another good season out of him, you know, looking at the fantasy, uh, outlook for the team for this upcoming season, starting at the top with Aaron Rodgers, uh, fantasy pros has him at R- or at QB 20 right now. And again, we've, we've talked about this in so many episodes, You know, a quarterback like that not being drafted in a one QB league is just not as fun, in my opinion. Like when you're when you're in a super flex league and you're having to draft these quarterbacks deeper, you know, 
in the rounds and strategize around that, it, it makes it a lot more fun. And it also makes it a lot more fun, you know, watching these teams on Sundays. You know, if you've got Jalen Hurts as your QB one and, you know, you're locked and loaded on that. And then you've got Rogers is, you know, your super flex spot and it's a Monday night and you're down by 15 points and you need him to have a good game, maybe go off a little bit. It just makes fantasy football all that much more fun, which is, you know, why, why we all play in the first place. Um, but anyways, you know, looking at the wide receiver position, uh, Garrett Wilson, you know, if you haven't seen our, our video breaking down, you know, AJ Brown versus Garrett Wilson versus Puka Nakua, go ahead and check that out because we get really uh, into the weeds with him and all those other guys. But, you know, long story short, uh, I, I think he's going to be set up for a really good year. And I think if Rodgers is healthy, we can see a very productive season you know, unfortunately, his quarterback play the last two years has just been atrocious. It was much better at Ohio State. Like, I really love this kid. I, I feel bad for the position that he's been put into. So really crossing my fingers that, you know, he can, you know, that that all works out. Uh, Mike Williams, wide receiver 51. I don't know. I mean, he struggled to stay healthy. How many targets is he really going to get? Uh, it feels kind of like a trap pick where he's a guy that is going to be selected maybe a little bit higher um, on name value. I, I know in our home, my home league, there's a lot of Chargers fans, so I'm sure he'll get pushed up the boards and uh, he's probably not someone I'm going to be attacking, but, you know, I'm sure we'll see a, a two touchdown hundred plus yard game out of him at some point, um, just his ability to, to go downfield and, and uh, you know, make guys miss. Um, and then Mal or in Corley, number 85, Again, if you want to take a, a late round flyer on a rookie, then you can afford to be super patient. Or if you want to take him in a best ball type format, um, by all means, uh, I'm not sure how consistent he's going to be. But again, you know, it, you know, watch his highlights. You can see what he can do with the ball in his hands. There's there, there's a lot of value with that on a fantasy squad. But you know, 85 with your last pick, if you want to have some fun with it, go for it. Um, and then Brees Hall, uh, right now, Fantasy Pros has him RB2. I, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, debate as to whether or not Brees or Bijan should be the number two running back off the board. I think, you know, people are going to be pretty consensus one on CMC. I, I'm sure there will be some hot takes as to why, you know, maybe he shouldn't be up there. But I think right now, Brees and Bijan are kind of locked into that similar tier. We we might do a... a you know, a rankings video with those two, maybe throw Jameer Gibbs in there as well, kind of the pros and cons of each pick. But right now, myself personally, I still do have Brees Hall. Um, number two, you know, I think this offense is going to be a lot more efficient with Rodgers. There's going to be a lot more scoring. You know, maybe he's not going to be that focal point that he had to be, you know, with the Zach Wilson offense. But um, again, I, I'd rather have my running back you know, in the red zone more often. Braylon Allen, you know, monitor that situation. What I what I talked about, monitor camp. If if they're saying, hey, he's the guy from five yards in, then you know, I'll probably change my tune on that. But but for now, um, you know, pretty comfortable with with him at two. You know, being in a, a three wide receiver format for you know the best ball leagues I play or our home league that we're you know that we discuss a lot. Um, you know, those guys kind of get pushed down the board. So it'll be you know, really dependent on where you draft someone like Brees as to your league setup. So always make sure you're paying attention to that because if you're in two wide receiver that he's going to get pushed way up the board. If you're in a three wide receiver, super flex, you know, he may be an early round, early second round pick. So uh, always pay attention to your league setup. But uh, with that, that is the New York Jets and look forward to talking with you guys about the Dolphins soon.